what the fuck are you talking about you're comparing habits to party and like all of these positions party, party and jorge do not play left hand you're in a fucking game you rotate positions you're no one's just taking in one you still have to i want us to use this pod to actually talk about team by team and think about like how we are how the squads are shaping up and do some fun predictions on like where they can lie and you know who their breakout stars are who who could potentially score the highest goals and and stuff like that right so without further ado i want to start off with arsenal aj how do you feel about your defense and the goalkeeping contingent bro this season going into the season so historically we've never had this good a defense like last season we were amazing but we were still short on numbers we had six in defense actually seven but then had like a timber injury very early on and then tommy also was forever injured after that after the fact so this time around we have eight bodies and eight able bodies if you also count in zinchenko which obviously is i think one of those horses for courses kind of player in this current arsenal team and then raya i think will go from strength to strength this season uh up after that porto game last year we arsenal fans kind of agreed or realized that you know raya provides a different dimension and is better to ramsdale but i think this will be the season when that perception goes outwards where other teams and uh, pundits and like you know all of these uh, external agents are going to recognize raya as like a top goalkeeper so i think arsenal defense is in a really really good shape there's one type of profile still missing which it can be like a runner profile from a left back or a right back but i think uh, i couldn't ask for more so i would rate it as 9 on 10 if not for you know that final profile that's missing 9 on 10 contentious yeah. said said do you agree with that or do you want to take some ratings from i will sadly agree with that because i feel arsenal just had like one one major weakness in their defense in their left back and zinchenko was clearly not cutting it we saw it in the game live as well versus liverpool that You know, it, that is the weakest link in their armor that can be easily exploited. And I think with Calafiore coming in, I think Arsenal and Arteta have like made very strategic improvements in their squad. They've identified what their main weakness was, and I think with that, with Saliba, with Gabriel, I think they are in a very, very good position with Ben White as well. The keeper could be slightly better, but I think Raya is decent behind a defense like that. So I think they're in a very good shape. I, I guess we're all pegging them for like a nine on ten going into the season on. paper at least we'll see how many cracks will unfold towards the season but neera bro how do you feel about your midfield bro i think um, midfield is a position where uh, we've strengthened over the last so two years the only problem there is that we don't have a true out and out number 8 right now we don't have someone who can connect that defense to attack i know that arteta wants declan rice to be that guy but i just don't see long term how he can be that i think he has a future as a number 6 where he needs to do more he needs to play more games there so he becomes better but uh, if i had to rate the midfield and obviously this is a comparison to other midfields uh, i can't i mean i have mm-hmm. to make comparisons to other midfield and then rate them i'm going to give it a 7 out of 10 the reason being that i think at number 10 odega is probably one of the best players in the league right now and number 6 i feel like declan rice and parthi we have got everything covered there but i don't see a, a link there i don't see a runner i don't see someone who can take the ball link attack to defense someone someone like a like a bruno someone like a you know what i'm saying right like a number proper number 8 yeah. so that's where it's missing but the transfer season is long and i think the next priority mm-hmm. is to get someone like that we've been linked with mikel merino which probably is something that will happen and if that transfer goes through my rating goes from 7 to around 8 yeah i think i kind of agree but i think you are probably being too harsh on your team i don't know if there's a 10 on 10 midfield across the premier league i would give it an 8 but my only my only disappointment with the arsenal team was probably viera like i really thought like in 2 3 seasons he would have come i thought last season would have been his breakout season but mm. sadly he didn't get enough opportunities with esr also out i think he'll be absorbing some of those minutes if there's no mm. transfer coming in so 7 and 1/2 or 8 is what i'm thinking wamsi any other thoughts on the midfield there yeah it's so crazy we don't include howard in that in that left eight right uh, i don't know i think he's not. i think he has the versatility to uh, to play there maybe it's and not you were the sort of dude when he plays that. when he plays him at 8 you will be the one who will be like why is he doing that and let's just stop talking about it. why we howard is part of the top 5 strikers in the world bro how can you yeah. play it of course yes <laughs> no <laughs> we shall see like putting van persie and fair and do that 
is like putting Van Persie in midfield, right? Oh, yeah. Somewhere in 2010, uh, Sid, Momsi, and I saw our favorite striker play in the midfield. So it's probably like Rooney effect that is like clogging our brains. So forgive yeah. us. Yeah. Havertz, the yet. So midfield Havertz doesn't doesn't have Havertz doesn't have cholesterol yet. High cholesterol yet. <laughs> cholesterol yet. <laughs> Fair it has the mobility overcharging on the two hours. Fun fact: Rooney's kid name is Car. So let let that let that like Hi, process in yeah. your brain a bit. Moving from the midfield. Wait, wait, wait just one second. Just one Go second. Ahead. What the fuck are you talking about? You're comparing Havertz to Party and like all of these positions. No, Jorginho to play left edge. Sorry, your Havertz will play Jorginho's position. You're saying? No, I'm, I'm saying he's being edgy, bro. He has more mobility than uh, Party <laughs> and uh, Jorginho are nice to play left edge. That's Party, also Party also and Jorginho do not play Jorginho. left edge. Dude, in a fucking game, you rotate positions. Though no one's just sticking in one. You still have My to. My God. Have Okay, well, so okay. We've contended enough, and I think I'm gonna pass a verdict of seven and a half out of ten for Arsenal's midfield. Moving on, I want to give Sid the podium to talk about Arsenal's attack because he he kept chiming in about like the top five all-time strikers. So, Sid, what do you think? Arsenal's, I think Kai Havertz sort of did a decent job despite all the doubters last season. I think he he was a pretty good striker, but I still don't feel like he's at that level, you know, where like a top team needs a striker. Like for example, City have Haaland or PSG had Mbappe or Real Madrid have Mbappe or whatever. So you if you if you have such big dreams of becoming a top club and becoming a dominant force in the PL, you need a striker who We is not already a dominant whose force position is PL. so to sustain that and to actually win trophies, yeah. you will. Need to Better. have somebody who is a slightly more, at least even in terms of an like X factor, right? Like Havertz does not inspire fear in the opponents' hearts, right? So, so that is, I think, a big problem. But apart from that, Martinelli on the left, Saka on the right. I think these are like really good wingers. I think they're both young, they're both pacey, they're both skilled. Wings are covered, but I feel in terms of the striking, Havertz should be the backup. Jesus should leave. They should get a new striker who is slightly more competent than Havertz. So I, I would say like a seven just because of the striker position. Seven out of ten. I don't agree, but I'll let first AJ or Nira jump in. AJ, AJ, AJ you're muted. So I'll just talk anyway. Uh, no, I think uh, I said. That I don't feel like Havertz is a problem or anything. I feel like he's uh, versatile, so we need him anywhere. And the only problem and the only issue with Arsenal's attack is the depth factor. Uh, we don't have a proper depth to Saka, proper replacement for Saka. When once he goes, we don't have any left left footed uh, right winger or left footed anything. Mm-hmm. So we need a out and out winger who's also a goal scorer. And that probably brings my like brings Arsenal's attack to almost like a nine and a half on ten. So at at this point, it's eight and a half. content just because of how clinical Havertz was last season regardless of like how much he was trolled how good Trossard how clutch Trossard is in in moments how good Martinelli looked in pre-season and Saka is Saka anyway so we also scored the most number of goals last season that's why defense and attack is something where i don't see arsenal being less than 9 on 10 regardless of who there is right now just because of the structure of the team so 9 on 10 for me and then honestly i also like gab j from the right i think he adds that Good depth. other i never thought like he could be a decent like right winger but like the couple of times that i've seen him play down the right he was actually pretty decent he's um, a very good so big think... game player gab j he's played he mm-hmm. plays really well in champions leagues big games like even for city he played the finals and mm-hmm. stuff like that but yeah long term he's he's not a starter but still I, okay. I, I like Arsenal's attack, man. Like as compared to other, only yeah. attack which goes above Arsenal for me is Liverpool and City. Liverpool also just there, City for sure. But Liverpool and Arsenal kind of together. Other than that, I don't see any other team. AJ, want to see any closing thoughts? I mean, I personally see attack as a little bit of a weakness, not because of the personnel, but because of the depth. He's who's just forever injured, and proof is going to be in the pudding whether he can stay fit throughout the season, even if playing a second fiddle role. And then that leaves us with like a four-man attack, which is Martinelli, Saka. Havertz and Trossard, right? So he used from the right, and another striker up top would be nice. But uh, another body would be nice. I think the personnel are fine. Another body would be great. Hopefully, someone who can make a difference and be clutch. I love yeah, uh, honestly, proof, proof is thing. in the pudding, bro. Lovely, lovely yeah. say. And Go add ahead. Tony, right? This becomes a nine, nine attack. I think that that's the kind of profile you're missing. Like we somebody need... who's like fitter than him. We have Havertz. I... We don't need Tony. That's not the profile. I don't think. Into... Yeah, I don't think Tony is even happening. I think uh, we are big on. Per- personalities and uh, you know how people even, are even regardless of that we have someone who can uh, hold the ball someone who is there to like create space for wingers we need a winger who can score goals from 
like another one basically someone more lethal than than martinelli and saka right or or we need an osimen oh yeah, yeah 100% <laughs> like that's what we need it's over it's curtains for the league if we get him <laughs> But that's why we won't get him, right? My yeah, wettest I mean, dream, wet dream would be Osimhen <laughs> and Nato if we get both of them. But of course, we're not getting either. So let's move on. All right, quick, quick shouts on who will be the breakout star for this season for Arsenal. I'll let the Ethan, Arsenal boys. Yeah. Ethan, our boy Ethan, Ethan no one lady. He's a young boy. He's a 16-year-old. He was the youngest player to ever play in the Premier League by Mikel Arteta, to so all his critics. Uh, and now this season, I think he's he's getting older. He's getting experience. He feels like uh, you know, he's a part of the team. He himself, it seems like if he. is like he's there and he's arrived and uh, he plays with a certain set of panache he has that pause and then he controls the ball and he can uh, because we're getting merino i think that gives him a chance to you know platform in himself next season and break out so i think from that left central midfielder left eight spot i think he'll be getting at least some good decent minutes so he'll be he'll so, be the one yeah i mean that's the, the reason the that's I... very low he just needs to get 14 minutes i guess right to beat last season's record so <laughs> small thing <deck. laughs> doesn't doesn't even make uh, sense what you said but sure <laughs> honestly you know. that's why i said the midfield was uh, the only thing lacking was that guy who can connect defense to attack and ethan nonary in the this nascent stage is kind of like that profile really highly rated also a lot of clubs wanted him and we got him out of all of the the stars that we've lost omari hachison chido and all these people he's the guy who arteta wanted to stay the most like the we gave him the biggest contract that we had for a for a pro contract and yeah he's he's the definitely the breakout star this season has to be him i think there are a lot of candidates for this for this at arsenal but i'd want to hear thoughts who would probably get the highest goals and assists this season is, this is just premier league right all yeah, across who cares i want to say martinelli but i would definitely stick to saka i think <laughs> just because of my head heart everything is saka so saka so saka's go availability is kind of just trumps Yeah, Kai Havertz. I'm gonna go for Kai Havertz. Yeah, because just because like I don't think we're getting like that striker striker. We're gonna get a winger, a goal scoring winger, and Kai Havertz is gonna just like shoot up the assist charts. Everything he's gonna be everywhere. He, this is his this is his season. Any thoughts, Sandeep Mamsi? Time to get a Havertz jersey. Let's do it. <laughs> Dude, I have I packed Odegaard to have I guess goals and assists this season. I think this season, last season, I thought there is gonna be a slight dip. It's gone from strength to strength. I'd love to see more output from Odegaard, like especially goals wise. Assist is already there. Just more output, and maybe they add those two, three goals that they're missing from the striker. Then you're good. It's a nine. I'm just saying it makes sense ahead, because yeah. if you get Marino, then there's a balance there, right? And the pivot and Odegaard can just play like he does. So I nail. I was like, doesn't Arsenal hold the record for most assists? Is it Henry? Twenty-one. Yeah. yeah. In the season. Henry and KDB and tied Andri together. And KDB, yeah. But I Andri, just KDB and like, also Cess. Cess at Chelsea. On the life of me, I don't understand how Ozil didn't do it because Ozil had yeah, exactly. thirteen <laughs> assists yeah. in the first half of first. the season, something like that. He needed yeah. what three, four assists just in the second. and half and then Olivier Giroud decided to throw his worst season of all times so guys should see the clock comps yeah let's see I, i'm i'm actually waiting for someone to break that record because you know getting 21 assists in a premier league season is just like god like so we'll see maybe arsenal with their output last season there is a candidate somewhere in there uh, mm-hmm. i'd love to for saka to be again highest ga <laughs> but we'll see quickly last segment for arsenal there's no point doing all of these but i just wanted to pick three three things right like probability of arsenal contending in the title challenge again probability of arsenal just finishing third or fourth not in the title challenge i mean and probability of them falling out of that that cliff which in my mind is very low but mm-hmm. for these three things to happen what needs to go horribly wrong or horribly right for it to happen quickly i just want to do a round table aj what are your thoughts on these three just want to hear one line 98 one and one <laughs> 98 one and one. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we're definitely challenging. I think uh, something needs to horribly go wrong for us to not challenge. Uh, again, th- third or fourth. When I said, I mean, it can be third and fourth, but then they can be like a third team challenging and you know it going down right to the wire and then something going wrong at the last couple of game weeks. So that doesn't count. But I think we're definitely challenging. There's no okay, way we're in, not challenging. In those in that last one scenario, what could horribly go wrong? I want to hear it from you. I think injuries. I think injuries. So Saliba getting injured, Saka getting injured, Declan Rice getting injured, and I think we have the personnel to deal with it. It's just that it'll t- it'll be a little bit of a drop off for the new people to adjust in, and by that time we might just be out of it. And sometimes you know in title challenges, what happens is like if you're at the top at the end, or if you're amongst the contenders, then that itself propels you to achieve greater things. If you're out of it before, let's say by April, then the last five six game weeks become kind of like you know okay whatever we have to just go through the motions and. 
it. So I think that might happen if injuries hit us badly. But I don't see it happening, to be honest, because our style of play and everything that we have built towards up until this season has been in a way where like it doesn't put a lot of pressure physically on on players. So I hope long long may that continue. Said quickly these three things. I I don't see Arsenal out of the top four in any way. this season uh they they're probably one of the strongest teams right now so i'd go for like a 80% top 2 definitely title challenge for sure and maybe like a 20 30% 20% for like the remaining like coming just coming in the top 4 like out outside the title challenge i don't think mm-hmm. that they'll fall off from this 100% top 4 100% champions yeah, league again yeah 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 cool vamsi yeah very similar to it now greater than 75% top will be that they're going to finish I mean, they're going to be in a title challenge. I feel like there's a lot of competition, a lot of teams strengthening, a lot of money being spent in the transfer market. Adjusting for that, they're definitely making top four. And you know, Saka and all these boys have played way too much football, especially like Euros last season, pre-season. They're out, they're chilling now. But only that can get them out of Europe. Otherwise, I don't see them going out of Europe at all. Sales property or what? Nirav, hundred zero zero, hundred zero zero. Let's go, my boy. I'll be there if it's not true. I'll wait for you there. Cool, perfect. I think uh, looking at the fixtures list, the only thing is that like if Arsenal don't are not ready for the season, game week three and game week four are like Spurs and City, which would be like really interesting to see how it all shapes up. I think if you ask an Arsenal fan, they'd rather have this game in the beginning than towards the end. So let's see how the season shapes up. 